Hi everyone, my name is Dave Berry, the news director with CKBG News, and with us is the mayor of the city of Prince George, Lynn Hall. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. It was, it was great. Hope you're looking forward great. to a good new year as well. Looking forward to a good new year and uh, anticipation is running high. Good. Uh, for the next half hour, we're going to have a, a chance to sit down and, and talk with the mayor about some of the things that we've seen in 2016 and some of the things looking ahead to 2017. Mm -hmm. So Good. let's start with 2016. And 2016 really is uh, uh, the halfway point of the four-year yeah. mandate for City Council. So um, in short, how have you done? Well, I think uh, it's been an uh, exceptional 2016. We're very pleased with where we are today. We look back on the last 12 months. Uh, from a development perspective, uh, we just got numbers uh, out uh, for development permits, around $125 million for 2016. That's uh, one of the best years in uh, probably seven or eight years, Dave. Uh, and uh, from a planning perspective, uh, we're very pleased with where we're at. There's been a number of initiatives that have taken place in the city throughout every department. Uh, so we're, we're pleased. And um, I think uh, around the development piece, I think one of the biggest uh, pieces for us was the River Bend Seniors Housing Project is, uh, is, is a big project for us in the community. Uh, we certainly heard loud and clear from seniors that uh, we need that kind of residence in our city. So that's just one example, I think, of what we've seen happen in 2016. Well, one of the things that your council has done is set up some key priorities and uh, mapped out a, a vision mm -hmm. and uh, and some strategies and, yeah. and let's just run through sure. some of the strategies and yeah. and the first one is social development and we one of the strategies there is to deal with the homelessness problem in Prince George yeah. and, and council has done quite a bit with that. Yeah we have and because we're centrally located in the province and we're the biggest community certainly in the northern part of the province we uh, we have a lot of services that people want to access so we've seen a tremendous amount of people we've been to Prince George that require access to social services uh, uh, homelessness is is an issue uh, so what we've done and worked with uh, BC housing uh, we're trying to increase the number of housing opportunities for people that are in need and that was a big part of the strategic planning that we went into and we talked about our social planning department and uh, it's a tremendous amount of work uh, and we're still working at it uh, but we've made strides uh, there's more to be done uh, you're never going to cure the issue completely uh, but we're working hard on it there's also a, a, a strategy that said uh, implement a child youth and family strategy yeah. uh, i'm not sure we're as far along as that as we are on some of the other issues yeah that that is a, a project in the works and and we continue to work away on that that particular piece uh, of the strategy really requires us to work very closely with the provincial government. And there are some federal government agencies as well that we can work closely with. Uh, but again, that's a tremendous amount of work and that whole social planning piece is, uh, is really a huge piece for us to bite off. It's uh, a tremendous amount of work in, in developing a strategy and, and being able to implement it uh, and, and keeping in mind that it's not always the city's responsibility when it comes to the funding of many of these projects. So uh, we're looking for partners and those partners inevitably are the province or the federal government. Now there used to be a time when the province did its thing and the yeah. city did its thing and, and of course nowadays it seems like the crossover is uh, um, found just about everywhere. Yeah. But when does a city start to take on too much and in other words uh, give the the province or the federal government a free ride? Well that's a fine line and you're absolutely right. These projects and incentives that we're trying to take a look at uh, developing in the city uh, really cross political boundaries. Uh, so we have to be very careful that we don't take on too much as a community. Uh, we absolutely need that partnership with the province and the feds. If you don't have that, uh, it's virtually impossible at times for us to do the amount of work that needs to be done. Another one of the, uh, the key goals is, is in, under environment mm -hmm. is to expand the uh, community energy system. We, yeah. We've seen, we see, ha, has it turned out to be better than expected, that system? I don't know that it's turned out to be better than expected. I think what's happened is that <clears throat> we're about where we thought we would be. We would like more private sector connections to the, to the energy system. Uh, this past year we connected the Plaza 400 and we connected the courthouse to it. So I think we've got about 14 major facilities that are connected to that system. 
Uh, and, and the push will be to try to attract that private sector development into connecting to the system. That's a key piece for us. Transit. Mm -hmm. Transit is, is one of those things that I think a lot of uh, Prince George residents don't really understand because we're, we live <laughs> eight hours away from Vancouver, eight hours yeah. away from Edmonton. We're used to driving. Uh, so the need for a transit system has never been has never struck uh, long-time residents anyways as, yeah. as being an overwhelming need, but uh, more and more time and effort is, is being placed into transit. Well, it, there is more time and more effort being placed into it because we're hearing loud and clear from our student population at CNC, UNBC, and also uh, students in the K-12 system that busing is important. And so they utilize the transit system to a greater degree than many people do in the city. Uh, and even though our ridership is you know, roughly maintained over the years, it's still a necessity and a service that we need to provide. It costs us money, uh, but uh, a city of this size requires a transit system, and uh, we're obviously hoping that the ridership increases. Uh, but as I said, we're seeing a great uh, number of uh, ridership increases that are running the main corridors to the college and the university. Very quickly, um, economic development mm -hmm. plan. Where are we with that? So we established an advisory committee uh, on economic development that was done early this year. Uh, we've concluded uh, our final meeting. Uh, that report will be coming to council uh, in early January and for council to take a look at what the economic strategy is uh, from that group of individuals that we pulled together. And uh, also the Economic Development uh, Office then will have an opportunity to take a look at uh, all of those recommendations and embed them in the economic strategy for the city. So we'll see both of those documents in January. Another one other heading, uh, city government uh, employee engagement. And, yeah. and we all know what happened uh, uh, a few years mm -hmm. ago, the first strike in the city's history, uh, 2017. Uh, we'll be moving into perhaps another negotiation. Yeah, and it was important for us as a council and our senior administration team to uh, really connect with the employees of the city. So, uh, you know, it's the city workers that you see out and about doing the daily work of the city, day in and day out. It's not so much council or senior administration. We wanted uh, to really reconnect with them, just as I talked about reconnecting with the entire community. And I think we've come a long ways in doing that. Uh, I think we have a better relationship and we're certainly now in a position uh, as a council, uh, we, we certainly understand the intricacies of the operation of the city. And uh, that's important. That's important for us to have a good working relationship uh, with, with, that, uh, with, with that staffing piece. 2017 will be a very big year for the city. A lot of tough decisions coming up mm -hmm. and we're gonna take a break and come back and, and talk about some of those uh, potentially tough decisions for our city.